Thank you everyone for taking seats. Now I would like to request our moderators, Dr. Mohammad Sakib Shariar and Dr. Minhas Arifin to proceed, proceed further and to moderate the session. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you all to the uh, most important session. This is the radial intervention session. This is the session nine, hall B. So uh, first of all, I request our first speaker, Professor Sabina Hashem, to come up with uh, his, uh, her lecture, The Jail Balloon Technique in Radial Intervention. Professor Sabina Hashem. My dear learning audience, Assalamu Alaikum. So today my presentation, Jail Balloon Technique is coronary bifurcation, bifurcation lesion in by radial route. Uh, bifurcation lesion accounts for approximately 15 to 20 percent of all percutaneous coronary interventions. Current studies show the benefit of simple stenting approach for simple bifurcation lesion. And here, uh, 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 the side branch preservation uh, is an important issue. Side branch mechanism of side branch deterioration is by plex shift and carina shift. So this is, we all know, this is a management strategy of bifurcation lesion. So my topic strategies for uh, protecting the side branch during bifurcation lesion PCI in case of uh, provisional stent strategy, provisional, there might be provisional double stent and double stent primarily from double stent strategy. So uh, provisional stent strategy by, can be done with gel wear technique, gel balloon technique, modified gel balloon technique. There are other techniques as well. Side branch occlusion may be a disaster during coronary bifurcation intervention and leads to a serious advanced clinical events. Protecting the side branch to keep it open is one of the main principles when performing bifurcation lesion intervention. Provisional stenting using a jail sidebar is most extensively accepted simple technique, but a jail wear is unable to prevent side branch closure after stenting of main branch. So jail wear, jail balloon technique is considered to be the more effective in preservation of side branch patency. So this is the COVID registry. They, show, they have shown the superiority of the side branch uh, protection by jail wet technique than the sing single uh, stent technique. Uh, this is the couple of uh, literature for jail balloon technique. Uh, journal of Col American College of Cardiology. Then uh, journal uh, intervention cardiol. <laughs> then uh, jail uh, and uh, Euro intervention journal. Then Euro Intervention Journal, they all uh, shows the superiority of gel balloon technique over the gel wet technique. And this is the um, literature uh, published in 2022, uh, just this year. Uh, they have shown the gel balloon technique is superior to the gel wet technique in reduction of rate of side branch occlusion. And this is the one B BMG. Uh, this is the large uh, study CIT result trial. They have also shown the superiority of gel balloon technique over the gel well technique in provisional stenting bifurcation lesion. This is also um, from China, Tanji Medical Journal. So they have shown, they have done uh, 12 months follow up. They have shown that mace is lower in gel balloon group than the gel bad group. So two types of uh, gel balloon technique, as I mentioned, conventional gel balloon and modified gel balloon. So this is the difference I have collected from different literatures. Uh, the main difference in conventional gel balloon and modified gel balloon technique. So in both, the, uh, starting is the same. You have the main branch and the side branch. And main branch is predilated and as necessary the side branch. And in case of conventional gel balloon, balloon is, balloon is that the size to approximate the side branch vessel and diameter generally 1.5 to 2 millimeter and with adequate length. And the proximal marker of the side branch balloon positioned approximately 0 to 2 millimeter proximal to the stent. So this is the one gel, bell, conventional gel balloon technique. And in case of modified gel balloon technique, the side branch is uniformly decided to be the half of the planned main, main, main branch stent diameter. And position of the gel balloon is carefully adjusted as its proximal end is attached to the main branch stent. So this is the one. 
Uh, after that, the main branch stent is deployed in conventional gel balloon, and the side, uh, keeping the sideware and the balloon gelled. If the side branch has not been compromised, then the gel balloon is uh, the side branch balloon is inflated to a low pressure, that is up to 60 atm. But in case of modified gel balloon technique, the main branch stent is deployed. Both the stent and the gel balloon are simultaneously inflated at the same pressure, norm uh, normally at 12 atmosphere. After that, the, uh, uh, it is similar that the uh, next the conventional gel balloon and uh, uh, modified gel balloon, uh, the next steps are almost similar. So we won't go to that. So this is, in our lab, we have used six French uh, guide catheters and seven French guide catheters. For seven French, we have used the slender guide sheath, uh, seven and six. And we took the seven French guide catheter, uh, and we have tracked it by the Kamba technique. Now see, let, let's see a couple of cases. So here uh, is a direct stent in. The side branch D1 uh, looks, ostea looks healthy, so during PCI to LED, no protection is needed. So this is the stenting, direct stenting done. Another one, a young man with uh, STMI uh, here, it's a direct stenting. It was done uh, without uh, keeping a gel wear in the side branch, and after that, the large diagonal is lost after the main branch stenting. Now comes the gel wear technique. So here, uh, significant stenosis in the LCX and OM, provisional stenting done with a gel wear in the side branch. But the result was not that much appreciated, so dilate side branch was dilated again, and then FKBI done, and this is the final result. So this is the gel wear technique. Now comes the gel balloon technique. So here, large D1 branched, and brain bu main branch stenting with gel balloon, and uh, uh, main branch is stented with a gel balloon in the side branch. So this is after pot, this is the final result. So this is an LM to LED crossover tent. Here, there was a LM, LED, and L6 Medina 110 bifurcation lesion, but there was 111 lesion with LM to D1, LED to D1. So deployment of the stain from LM to LED was done, but keeping a gel balloon in D1. So this is the final result. Now come the gel balloon technique again, uh, the LED D1 bifurcation lesion, it was post PCI to LED. He, this patient came with unstable angina. After, stay, after the, we, do, we done the angiogram, there was a, mm, the patent stent was in C2, but after the stent, there was LED and D1 bifurcation lesion. So stent was placed in the main branch, keeping a gel balloon, the side branch, post dilatation done. But uh, result was not that good. We did the KBI, FKBI, and this is the final result. Another uh, mm, uh, modified gel balloon technique uh, here, uh, le the, there was CTO in the uh, lesion in the LED. The lesion was crossed with microcatheter. And then pre-dilatation, after the pre-dilatation, the there was a big diagonal 111 Medina. So uh, this is the gel, uh, main branch was tented with the gel balloon in the side branch. Then post-dilatation done, and this is the final result. Another one, uh, there was a significant stenosis in the RC proximal, and there is a bifurcation lesion stenosis in PLB and PDA. So stenting done, RCA to PLB with gel balloon in PDA. And then proximal path stented, and this is the final result. So gel, balloon, gel balloon technique, so a series of complicated technique to preserve the side branch. What are the realistic advantages? Yet to know.
Thus, it really prevents the side branch occlusion. Is rewiring and kissing balloon needed? So, yet to be answered. So, uh, there are some uh, experience uh, in our Bangladesh experience. Uh, it was done under the guidance of uh, Professor Mir Jamaluddin since uh, 2017. We we done uh, 119 cases, uh, uh, mostly D LADD1, LCXOM, and RCA, PDAPLB. Uh, almost all done by transradial approach. And uh, procedural success was 100%. So take home message, the new gel and modified gel balloon technique provides maximum SB protection in cases of bifurcation lesion. It requires less time, reduces side branch occlusion risk, even though side branch balloon was inflated. The immediate clinical outcome and procedural success will encourage to use the technique safely and reliable preservation of side branch potency. So thank you. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, madam, uh, for your brilliant presentation. Because of the time constraint, the cons question answer session will be uh, at the end of the all four lecture. So I am uh, inviting the next uh, lecture, the, uh, Dr. Noor Alam. The topic is loop, spasm, and knot at exciting journey of radial intervention. Thank you, uh, moderator, dear Minhas. Uh, respected chairpersons, uh, respected discussants, moderators, and dear audience. I am very much delighted to be here in this gathering, especially the radialist and tho those who are, inter who are interested in radial angiogram. And I am feeling proud to be here as myself try to do 99% of my case in radial route. So my topic is <coughs> spasm, loop, and knot, an exciting journey of radial intervention. As uh, all of you, those who you are doing uh, radial procedure, through radial procedure, uh, day to day you have to face this type of problem. Just I will show a few cases regarding this. My case on Mr. J, 47 year old male. He was diagnosed as non STMI. He had diabetes. He is a smoker and he, his ECG shows STT changes in lead 2 3 AVF and echocardiography, no regional almost abnormality, good LV systolic function. And we did angiogram through right radial root. Let us see the angio. In this view, we see that there is 100% occlusion in the LCX in its mid part. Let me normal. LAD type 3 vessel, normal. LCX has 100% occluded in its mid part. While doing this, NGO, just we look at the pressure curve, suddenly pressure, pressure showing nothing, pressure zero. Yes, we have Professor uh, Abu Ajum sir with us. Welcome, sir. Would you please come to the dais, sir? Thank you, sir. We are very much delighted as you are here. So when uh, at this stage, we suddenly saw that pressure is not showing. So what happened? We just looked that you see the picture. The tiger catheter full of air and there is knotting. So we just tried to do uh, unknotting the uh, catheter and uh, try to push and pull the catheter, try to unknot the catheter by rotating or moving in opposite direction, but it doesn't work. Then we try to push the knot part of the catheter to the spacious area and push the uppers. And that works. In the spacious area, the knot become unknot, unknotted. So, 
so after this we just check the radial artery if there is any dissection or any other complication not it's okay <coughs> then we took another tiger catheter and uh, do the uh, right side right coronary normal then we did PCI to LCX extended done extending done in LCX so this is the final result so this is my uh, after that we just before uh, coming out we just check the radial artery it's okay so this is my first case and my second case is just uh, a couple of days ago this patient admitted in our unit we just uh, she was a patient of WBW syndrome but at this time she presented with chest pain and troponin I was little bit raised and she was diagnosed as non-STMI as WBW syndrome uh, ECG uh, previous ECG was SBT but at this time it was sinus and as the patient's troponin I was ready we, we have we tried to see the coronary angiogram let us <coughs> let us see the coronary angiogram we did coronary angiogram through the, through the right radial root <coughs> so you see this picture uh, after cannulation uh, where, uh, where, uh, after placing the wire then when we try to advance the catheter tiger catheter catheter is not uh, advancing catheter is stuck there is obstruction catheter is not moving so we would do the catheter wire then we pu put the dye through the uh, vascular access sheet and we saw that that picture there is a huge spasm in the uh, brachial artery brachial and uh, uh, above artery <coughs> then we took a balloon assisted technique BAT then we took a uh, PTCA guide wire and a balloon and by balloon assisted technique we further movement and able to cross the uh, able to cross the spasm of the brachial artery so after uh, reaching the <coughs> arch of the outer or subclavian artery we draw the balloon and uh, the guide wire catheter then we put regular wire and did the coronary angiogram actually the patient's coronary angiogram reveals normal findings as she was a WPW syndrome so what is balloon assisted technique uh, before uh, coming back we saw again there is a spasm we give uh, we uh, we have given uh, anti-spasmodic like varapamil GTN uh, still there is uh, spasm but pulse is uh, pulse is uh, regular and uh, good volume of pulse so we uh, finish the angiogram so what is balloon assisted technique when there is a spasm severe spasm we have to uh, we have to uh, take this technique uh, balloon assisted uh, tracking balloon assisted tracking to overcome a spasm or toxicity we need a compliant angioplasty balloon 0 0.014 standard angioplasty wire and balloon for six French catheter two millimeter balloon is uh, compatible for seven French catheter 2.5 millimeter balloon for eight French catheter three millimeter balloon and we have to uh, we have to uh, uh, make sure that when we advancing when we will advance the um, uh, balloon with catheter the two-third of the balloon should be out of the catheter and inflate inflate the balloon just above the nominal inflation pressure just balloon balloon should be inflated so look at this the two-third of the balloon is outside the catheter and balloon is uh, inflated so why it is needed uh, how, how it works the conical shape of an inflated balloon trip increase the flexibility it eliminates the obstruction of the edge of the guide by athromatous plaque or torsos vessels it minimizes the reservoir effect you, you look if, 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 if we inflate the balloon just in front of the catheter the reservoir effect of the uh, catheter A's will be minimized and with the conical shape of the balloon it will overcome the spasm or, or toxicity <coughs> so this is about my case my third case is 
Mr. E. H. 45 year old male. Uh, he has respect to diabetes, hypertension. He presented with us acute. Uh, he presented with us inferior MI and ECG showing inferior hypokinesia. We did coronary angiogram through right radial root. You see the loop is there. So we first have to cannulate. Uh, uh, we, we, uh, we had difficulties to cannulate the uh, left main left system due to this loop. And we did, can we, we did angiogram uh, right coronary. There is a distally 100% occluded RCA. <coughs> and it was uh, we faced difficulties to cannulate the uh, uh, coronary artery left, left system, as uh, uh, you see. Hot types of loop here. So anyway, we, we did the coronary angiogram. And uh, during PCI, we we pre planned uh, we 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 did pre plan that we will uh, bring the patient another day and we will go for femoral route and did the uh, RC elation uh, RC elation stenting. So this is my last case, uh, fourth case, sixty five year old female, old MI anterior. Uh, she had diabetes, hypertension. She had old anterior MI. Eco shows enteroceptor hypokinesia, LVF 40 percent. Uh, we did coronary angiogram through right radial root. Look at this road. This is a very beautiful road. Anybody uh, will be happy to walk through this road to reach. Our director, Sir Professor Mirja is with, uh, with us. We are very happy to uh, see him. Sir, uh, sir, please, would you please come to the dais, sir, along with uh, Abu Ajum, sir. Sir, please come, sir. Actually, all of you know, uh, with, the, with the guidance of our <laughs> Professor Mir Jamaluddin, sir, who made this radial intervention popular in Bangladesh. And all of uh, we are doing in the guidance of Professor Mir Jamal, sir, a radial intervention. So, as I am talking through this road, if anybody can walk, he will be happy to, uh, to reach the uh, goal or reach, uh, uh, to reach anybody's heart. This road, okay, this road might be acceptable, Why? Uh, no problem, also can go through this road. But what about this road? This is a hilly road, zigzag road, so the, the, there will be difficulties to reach this road, to, uh, to travel this road to reach destination. Slide slide to them. Slide Okay. So, the, so it is very difficult uh, to, uh, to travel this hilly zigzag road to reach the destination. So now come back to my case. 65 year old female, he, she, she had anterior MI, LB ejection fraction lays. So we did coronary angiogram through this, uh, uh, through radial path. You see that uh, axillary artery and subclavian artery, so tortuous. You, you look, uh, you, you see the uh, loop is there, probably there may be arterial lucidia is there. So there is a, a heart loop create another heart shape uh, above the heart of the, that lady. So anyway, we did the coronary angiogram. And patient had TBD. We send the uh, uh, as the patient had TBD, we just uh, do, uh, we did the uh, lima. While doing the lima, uh, the story is not finished yet. While doing the, uh, trying to engage lima, we saw that pressure is again not showing. So let us see what happened there. There is still there is some knotting, knot. So uh, we uh, unknot that uh, moving the rotating the catheter in opposite direction and the, the, this time we did it successfully. And finally, we, after doing angiogram and uh, lima, we took out all the assembly and completed the angiogram. So, Mr. Chairperson, uh, I am just uh, about my ending my presentation. What are the learning ob points from my, uh, these cases? While doing coronary angiogram, if pressure is not being shown, 
look for catheter kinking or not for unnoting the op for unnoting the catheter uh, uh, not opposite torquing is needed especially in the larger vessels radial and brachial artery angiography could be done when there is suspicion of spasm once upon a time uh, there was a tradition that after cannulation uh, we just see the uh, radial artery angiogram not likely every case if any obstruction is there any any uh, obstruction is there for advancement of catheter wire then we could could see the uh, radial angiography or brachial angiography when there is a spasm a spasm PTCA guide wire or balloon assisted tracking is needed for catheter as much uh, advancement as I have um, uh, I have shown you in my third cases so uh, uh, this is my team uh, thank you very much thank you dr. Nuralam uh, sir for your nice presentation uh, I would like to uh, request our uh, request the audience is there any uh, question or uh, any query for discussion Thank you, Nuralam, for your brilliant presentation. Uh, do you like to keep a wire while you are making unknotting? Because while you try to unknot, uh, there may be chance of broken the catheter. So if you keep a wire, maybe that may be helpful. This is my, my idea. Maybe uh, please comment. Thank you, uh, Anish bhai. Thank you, Anish bhai. Uh, in my cases, the wire was inside. And we are trying to unknot by rotating the opposite direction, keeping the wire. And if sometimes uh, wire not there, if we try to push the wire, wire will not cross the knot. This is the problem. Uh, there is another query from uh, Dr. Shoyal sir from uh, Dr. Nuralam. Thank you very much for your four cases. We are the beginner of uh, radial uh, interventions. So why do we just put a uh, guide wires? Uh, 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 catheters, uh, radial catheters uh, in the uh, aorta. After doing coronary angiography, when just we are withdrawn the catheter, if there is nothing, just like you have shown, if this happened in the supplementary region, and we are trying to withdraw uh, by giving a uh, guide and guide is not going uh, through the nodes, how we can uh, at that moment, how can we just uh, withdraw the catheter at the time? If there is a knot in the subclinal artery regions and uh, uh, we are not, uh, the guide is not going through these knots, at that time, how can we solve this problem? I mean, how can we withdraw that catheter? Thank you very much. Actually, uh, when there is knotting, our first aim should be that should be to unknot. And after in in cine uh, in uh, in fluoroscope, we have to try to uh, rotate the catheter in opposite di uh, opposite direction of the knot. And uh, uh, at there is supplementary uh, specious. So uh, if uh, if the it knotting is in the narrower artery, we have to, uh, we should have a plan that we could if we could move the knot in the specious artery, it would be uh, easy to unknot. And uh, with caution, we have to unknot, uh, try to unknot Only the to uh, 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 rotate the catheter on the opposite directions, the knot will be open or knot will be unknot, unknotted? Opposite direction. The only only one look. methods. We, we have to look and then it will be unknotted. Why, why do you find your lumen? So you cannot introduce. Rather, you can create some problem inside the catheter. So be gentle, try to unknot and pull out the catheter. So gentleness is very essential here. Every interpersonalist should have three eyes. Cannot three eyes, but it's not Oh, pressure at the gate at the risky are at the market at the risky. Then a jock on it with the class of pressure nigh pressure flat line. Talking to the Nishi got on not with a another kind of pressure as well. I don't get a luminous lumen there can of pressure as well. Cause they all come at a with us. Cause it then and there we shall have to see the entire course of the catheter and you will find that there is not semi not full not double not because it is not that it is not a business to shop to be sure that the top of a hobby I'm not to hold you could have to worry hobby will issue overcome court of it 
আর প্র্যাকটিক্যাল প্রাইমারিলি যেন না হয় সেই জিনিসটাও আমাদের খেয়াল রাখতে হবে ধন্যবাদ আবার নেক্সট প্রেজেন্টার ডক্টর আব্দুল রেসপেক্টেড চেয়ারপারসন অ্যান্ড লার্নিড অডিয়েন্স আই ওয়েলকাম ইউ অল ইন দিস রেডিয়াল সেশন ইটস মাই গ্রেট প্লেজার টু প্রেজেন্ট ইন ফ্রন্ট অফ মাই মেন্টার ইন রেডিয়াল ইন্টারভেনশন মিস প্রফেসর মির জামালুদ্দিন স্যার থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার ফর ইয়োর গ্র্যান্ড এফোর্ট টু মেক আস এ রেডিয়ালিস্ট ইন দ্য ইন দ্য জার্নি ইন ইন আই সিভিডি সো মাই টক ইজ প্রিভেন্টিং দ্য কমপ্লিকেশন অফ ট্রান্স রেডিয়াল ইন্টারভেনশন হোয়াট টু ডু Since uh, 2015, the guideline is changing. From uh, uh, 2015 non-stemming guideline, the radial is preferred class 1, but in experience hand. And look at that. In 2018, there is no experience. Radial access as standard approach for coronary angiography and PCI. So this is the preferred approach. And the uh, SEC AHA guideline also stayed, uh, changed since 2017. So why transradial approach is important? Uh, preferred because enhanced safety, reduced morbidity and mortality, and overall reduced procedural cost. I have a paper in uh, 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 Bangladesh Cardiovascular Journal. We have published 100 cases of day case coronary angiography. The patient admitted in the morning, they discharged in the evening after the coronary angiography with a, band, uh, with a bandage in the uh, hand. So this is feasible. We can Uh, discharge the patient uh, uh, fr uh, fr uh, same day. So, adequate experience with transradial procedure, reduced vascular complication and improved procedural success uh, uh, and the pre-procedural plan is very important. So, the complications of transradial approach may be in the puncture site or may be due to misadventures between the excess site and the heart. So we have some uh, few features uh, of misadventures uh, by Professor uh, Dr. Noor Alom already presented few. So these are the complications, radial artery spasm, bleeding, hematoma, compartmental syndrome, perforation, laceration, uh, uh, evulsion of artery, radial artery occlusion, pseudoaneurysm, subcutaneous granulomatous reaction, cutaneous infection, digital ischemia, and delayed sympathetic dystrophy syndrome. The appropriate selection of patient is very important. The complications of radial arteries are, if you look at the uh, neuralum cases, two of the, um, probably all the f cases are female. So female is low body weight, female gender has increased complication of radial. Dose of anticoagulation it is very important. Diameter of the radial artery, sheath size. If the sheath size is mismatched with the arterial size, this is the cause of radial complication. Number of catheter exchange, procedural duration, and type and duration of excess compression after the procedure. That is uh, evaluated by Pancholi and uh, Petel in 2012. So the compression of the radial artery after the procedure, the time of compression is very important. The radial artery spasm, this uh, frequency varies from 0.8 to up to 14%. And this is the spasm. And the predictors are female, small radial artery, diabetes, unsuc and, and the first attempt is the best attempt. Unsuccessful excess at first attempt is one of the predictor of radial artery spasm. So it may be focal, it may be diffuse, may occur during puncture, during catheter manipulation, or due to repeated catheter exchange. So all can produce radial artery spasm. When to suspect absence of previous palpable pulse, and pain in the catheter manipulation, and difficulty in catheter and wire advancement. So the key to prevent radial artery spasms are, first prick is the best prick to cannulate. Vasodilator cocktails, 200 microgram nitroglycerin and verapamil 2.5 through the arterial sheath. Gentle, gentle corkscrew motion of the catheter. Catheter and wire exchange should be minimal and downsize catheter if possible. Five grand French guide catheter has less spasm and other complications. And sedate the patient, especially if that patient is a female. They are so much anxious that sedation helps them. So how to overcome? We already uh, see that the how to overcome, but take time, sedate the patient. Subcutaneous GTN may help during puncture. Determination of spasm by taking radial angiography by diluted dye, additional dose of cocktail, then take an another cine. If persist, the spasm persists, we can took the 0.25 wire or a PTC wire 
to negotiate it. And during catheter manipulation, seizure the patient and downsize the catheter. So this is a case of radial artery spasm. We uh, took a PTCA wire and we negotiated it and then the uh, catheter is negotiated. And this is after the procedure, the radial artery spasm. There is some spasm, but th there is no dissection and uh, other things. This is another case. This is an accessory radial artery uh, arising from, from the arm. So higher up accessory radial artery origin, and this is a severe spasm. We crossed through the balloon-assisted tracking at, uh, mentioned by uh, Dr. Noor Alam already. And this is after the procedure. So the summary in, of radial artery spasm, the incidence of moderate to severe radial artery spasm is low in radial centers with experience with radial operators. The most common me method for radial artery spasm prevention is intraarterial vasodilator cocktail. The use of mild sedation is associated with reduced risk of radial artery spasm. The use of single vasodilator may be used. The radial artery occlusion, this is a very important, and the incidence is 2 to 18 percent in different uh, literature. And it may end up with maybe asymptomatic, but can cause a serious complication like hand ischemia. So the radial artery occlusion can be documented by ultrasound Doppler post-procedural. Presence of radial artery pulse does not rule out the radial artery occlusion because collateral flow may produce the radial artery pulse. And Loosening the bandage or occlusion device after the two hours of the decrease the incidence of radial artery occlusion. This is very important. And this is the triphasic or biphasic flow, and this is the absent flow or monophasic flow from the collaterals. And prevention of radial artery occlusion, what to do? Thrombosis is one of the mechanism of radial artery occlusion. So prophylactic anticoagulation is recommended to prevent the radial artery occlusion. We routinely use 5,000 unit of uh, heparin root, uh, in for CAG and for, uh, for PCI 70 to 100 unit per kg later on. Use vascular sheath and catheter with smallest possible diameter is recommended. The ratio of sheath diameter and radial artery, if it is more than one, there is an increased chance of radial artery occlusion. So the prevention of radial artery occlusion, immediate removal of sheath after procedure, this is uh, advised by Saito, Non-occlusive or patent hemostasis can lower the radial artery occlusion, as mentioned by Pancholi et al. and Petel et al. Concomitant compression of ulnar artery may reduce the radial artery occlusion. Shortening the bandage compression after removal of sheath, usually two hours, is mandatory and it is very helpful. But a study done in Martin et al. under the guidance of Professor Mir Jamaluddin, and I am also a co-author of this uh, study, Using the conventional compression technique, the incidence of radial artery is not very high, only 3% that found that, and we found that the loosening of the bandage after two hours reduced the rate of radial artery occlusion. This is published in a Bangladesh Heart Journal. So this is the conventional radial band with uh, uh, hemostasis technique. This is radial band, but I think 99% of our uh, uh, country, we use not use the radial band, we traditional method of compression of bandage. This is very effective, but men, uh, I again mentioned that after two hours of the procedure, we should loosen the bandage a bit so that the patency will be maintained. So the key to prevent the radial artery occlusion is proper anticoagulation, appropriate selection of equipment, uh, and uh, immediate removal of sheath, and patent hemostasis, and conventional hemostasis with loosening of bandage after two hours. Radial artery perforation, excessive resistance in the passage of guide wire and catheter felt in the operator, complaints of significant local pain of radial artery or brachial region of, by the patient, and development of an extensive hematoma may be present. So these are the indicator of radial artery perforation. Predisposing factors are small radial artery, elderly patient with tortuous radial artery, hypertensive patient, L R uh, radial artery loops in infinite forceful manipulation of guide wire and catheter. So we should be very gentle and course through like movement of the catheter is very important and reuse catheter or diagnostic wire is one of the causes of radial artery perforation. 
So how to confirm? Immediate removing the assembly and injection of a dye, diluted dye. And the protocols are apply the pressure cuff at the site of induration, uh, inflate the cuff for 15 minutes, 10 to 15 millimeter uh, 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 below the systolic blood pressure, monitor the arterial flow and oximetry, adjust the cuff pressure to obtain the signal, manage pain and hypertension, consider stopping anticoagulation, consider problems if no, uh, 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 consider protamine if no planning of PCI, and if persistent swelling pain in duration after two in inflation of 50 mini 15 minutes, consider urgent surgical concern. This is the uh, compression over the uh, hematoma and perforation, and look at the plethysmographic curve of the finger. So this should be present. The plethysmographic curve, if it is disappeared, uh, that we are giving the excessive pressure. So this is not uh, ideal. And it is ideal to 10 millimeter below the systolic blood pressure, the cuff pressure should be. The radial artery perforation and continuation of the procedure, we can uh, continue the procedure because if we cross the perforation and the catheter acts as a healer, so we can close, we can continue. So this is the radial artery perforation and bad technique and guide catheter as a healer. So this is the perforation. Catheter is not advancing and we are taking a, a dye, the perforation, the radial artery. Then we cross the PTC wire. Then we bat technique crossing the uh, perforated area. And this is another, another one. And this is after uh, uh, we are uh, crossing the um, perforation, uh, doing the procedure. And after the procedure, uh, there is no perforation and the catheter acts as a healer of the perforation. So when it, uh, 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 we thro go through the uh, perforated area, uh, the, it, it acts as a healer. So Perforation the distal radial artery, this is another one. This is uh, by Professor Mir Jawaluddin sir, I am taken from him. And this is, uh, we, can, we can also cross. And after the procedure, there is uh, no uh, perforation. This is the pseudo aneurysm of the radial artery. We can, uh, uh, sometimes it may be happened. But it can be treated by radial artery band. Compression is the treatment of pseudo aneurysm. So comp uh, maintain compression is the treatment of pseudo aneurysm. This is the pseudoneurysm of the uh, tr distal radial artery. This is from uh, Professor Sabina Hasem. Thank you, madam. And this is a uh, need to be operated for removal of the pseudoneurysm. This is the arteriovenous fistula. And catheter entrapment, uh, Professor Nur Alam already uh, mentioned uh, very nicely. So the denoting is the key. Denoting is the key. And, and it, it should be very gentle. We should be very gentle. Hematoma, the hematoma are gradually smaller easily. There is a hematoma scale. If it is less than 5 centimeter, it is grade 1, 10 centimeter, grade 2. If it is below the elbow, grade 3. And if it is el above the elbow, grade 4. So this is the scale, hematoma scale. And this is the hematoma bandage, forearm hematoma, different hematoma. This is very interesting, the hematoma in the infraclavicular region. So blister and hematoma, this is then a small hematoma, and this is the compartmental syndrome. So management of hematoma, apply pressure cuff at the site of induration. Inflate 15 minutes, uh, systolic BP 15, uh, uh, 15 millimeter below the systolic blood pressure, like the perforation, and every management is same that of permanent. Check for compartmental syndrome. This is very important. The plethysmography by pulse oximeter probe is very important. Here is the pulse oximeter is in the finger, and we'll check every finger, the plethysmographic curve. If it is okay, there is uh, nothing to audit. But if the curves are flat in any fingers, there is maybe a compartmental syndrome, and if the patient's pain is not relieved, then we'll call for the surgeon. So the key to prevent hematoma is single puncture is the best puncture uh, uh, method. Sheath artery ratio should be less than one, Travel always through the radial and brachial artery with fluoroscopic guidance. This is, sorry, there is a uh, spelling mistake. Fluoroscopic guidance. This is very important. From the puncture side to the uh, ascending aorta, we should through the fluoroscopy. So 
inadvertent uh, journey to a small branch may produce an hematoma. So this is very important. Uh, if the difficulty of the catheter manipulation, check with the contrast, put a compression with a BP cuff during the procedure at the site of catheter resistance. Don't wait for hematoma development. If we feel a dif uh, uh, difficulty to pass a site, we may have, we may fi uh, found that there may be a hematoma here, but if we put a compression during the procedure without producing hematoma, this may prevent hematoma. Use combo technique is a very important. This is the combo technique and the five French catheter, uh, multipurpose catheter over the, uh, 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 through the six French guide catheter and this is the very important and almost, uh, almost I think it is 70 to 80 percent reduction of radial artery complication after we using the combo technique. Uh, I think Professor Mir Jamal Saru will agree with me. There is a very few complication after the combo technique. So this is nothing special, but we have to have a 125 millimeter multipurpose catheter, five friends, to afford that uh, assembly. So this is very important. So Mr. Chairman, the uh, transradial route is the preferred route of coronary intervention. It has few complications than transfemoral route, even though the complication of transradial intervention is not uncommon. Complication is less in experienced head, so learning curve is very important. Pre-procedural planning, par-procedural and post-procedural appropriate measure reduce the complication. Immediate recognition of complication and prompt action is required for proper management. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience sharing. Thank you, Dr. Abdul Momin, sir, for your nice presentation uh, regarding tra transradial complications and its management. Though radial, uh, radial artery intervention, uh, radial first approach uh, gaining its popularity due to its less uh, number of complications, uh, but sometimes it may occur, and uh, you have shown very nicely. Now, our next presenter uh, is our Honorable uh, uh, Secretary General of BSCI and Director of NICBD, the uh, uh, pioneer radial interventionist of uh, uh, Professor Mir Jamaluddin, sir. Uh, he will talk on latest updates in radial intervention. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, learned experts in the dais and learned colleagues in front of me. Uh, my presentation is update. And so I uh, shall try to uh, complete it by five minutes as because on the uh, next um, gallery, our session is going on. So I shall complete it very um, quickly. <clears throat> Transradial approach is the standard vascular access. We know all of it. And distal versus conventional radial access for coronary angiography and intervention. It is the hot cake nowadays. Now whether we shall do distal radial or uh, proximal radial or conventional radial. Here it is, uh, and this uh, study is published into 2022 in Europe this year in last month. The DISCO radial is a prospective multicenter international open level RCT sponsored by Terimo Europe and only operators regularly performing transradial PCA in the whole spectrum of the coronary artery disease, including acute coronary syndrome, and who performed a minimum of 100 distal radial approach were qualified for the study. And DISCO radial trial sought to assess the efficacy and safety of distal radial approach compared with the conventional transradial approach with systemic implementation of best prevention methods for the reduction of radial artery occlusion. Practically, um, uh, nowadays, the main, uh, main focus is to prevent radial artery occlusion. Uh, most of us, we know, and uh, uh, it is well proved that radial artery, radial access is better than femoral access, and there is no debate between radial access, uh, between femoral access. But how shall we prevent the radial artery occlusion? That is the main target, and that is why this discoradial uh, trial. <coughs> and uh, in details, I don't want to tell, it will take time. Here only the, uh, they have shown the results of disco, uh, disco radial last uh, para. RCT showed an equally very low incidence of forearm radial artery occlusion and highlights the best, best preventive measures for radial artery occlusion. Avoidance as a mandatory, as a mandatory new reference for uh, transradial procedure. 
এখানে এই দিস বাই দিস স্টাডি দে কুড নট শো দ্যাট দ্যার ইজ সিগনিফিক্যান্ট প্রিভেনশন অফ রেডিয়াল আর্টের অক্লুশন বাই দিস ডিস্টাল রেডিয়াল ভার্সাস প্রক্সিমাল রেডিয়াল বাট ইট ইজ শোন দ্যাট ইট ইজ কম্পারেটিভলি সুপিরিয়র বাট সিগনিফিক্যান্টলি নট সুপিরিয়র অ্যান্ড অ্যানাদার স্টাডি রেডিয়াল ট্রায়াল টোয়েন্টি টোয়েন্টি ওয়ান হোয়াট দে টেল দ্য রেডিয়াল this radial trial 2021 based on the fact that the radial artery flow mediated dilatation you see there is a new term radial artery flow mediated dil dilatation meaning that you will occlude the uh, brachial artery and you will prick the radial artery and you will be able to uh, do the puncture very easily that uh, they have done in this radial artery dilatation to improve access and lower complications during coronary angiography the radial trial 2021 and another uh, patent trial randomized clinical trial on prevention of radial occlusion after transradial access using nitroglycerin this study also done in our country in our institute uh, by uh, thesis and patents prevention of radial artery occlusion after transradial access using nitroglycerin was a prospective multicenter randomized double blind 2 by 2 factorial placebo controlled clinical trial and this was published in 2022 may 2022 and here they have already also shown both early use and late use meaning that um, uh, nitrate to be used earlier as well as to be used later in both the cases they have shown that there is significant less number of radial artery there is less number of radial artery occlusion but it is not clinically significant and another DAPRO, DAPRO trial, Distal Radial Approach to Prevent Radial Artery Occlusion. This is also published in 2021. It was a prospective comparative longitudinal uh, randomized single center study and the primary objective to determine whether the distal radial access was superior to proximal radial access in preventing proximal radial artery occlusion at 24 hour after a diagnostic or interventional coronary procedure evaluated using uh, uh, ultrasound um, here they have proved that the early early closure early closure or early patency in case of using uh, this uh, in case of using this uh, nitroglycerin uh, the, the early closure early closure is almost equal but late patency is better those who use um, nitroglycerin And here you see the uh, primary objectives radi um, uh, proximal radial artery occlusion at 24 hour was 8.4 percent in the proximal group and 0.71 in the distal group again it is very significant result that i say um, for 30 and um, at 30 days the rates of proximal radial artery occlusion was 5.6 percent and 0.71 percent respectively uh, uh, proximal radial occlusion uh, uh, proximal radial arterial occlusion were 5.6 percent and uh, that is distal radial 0.71 percent meaning that in both the cases they have shown significant radial arterial patency by using distal radial approach prevention of radial artery occlusion of three hemostatic methods in transradial intervention for coronary angiography eta tara tinta method koreche act all standard patent hemostasis after patent hemostasis with ulnar compression and facilitated hemostasis with a state seal hemostatic device and um, uh, tr band placed over it and here they have found the result is primary and secondary endpoint hemostasis method radial artery occlusion 24 hours radial artery occlusion at 30 days and successful hematomas and hemat uh, hematomas and all these in uh, almost equal to the both proximal as well as distal radial uh, approach another study the resto randomized trial short term prospective use of rivaroxaban what uh, dr alam told use of rivaroxaban to prevent radial artery occlusion after transradial coronary procedure and it is published in uh, 2022 uh, 22, 
and the rest of trial was randomized parallel arm placebo controlled single center clinical trial performed at the first affiliated hospital of Wenzhou Medical University, China. The rest of trial showed that short term, uh, short term postoperative anticoagulation with rivaroxaban did not reduce the rate of 24 hour radial artery occlusion, but improved one month radial artery occlusion possibly owing to higher recanalization of the radial artery. This is another message and femoral or radial approach in the treatment of coronary chronic total occlusion. Chronic total occlusion coronary that is done by radial, way, radial approach or femoral approach. They have um, uh, made a uh, study in between this. The fourth CTU trial was the first randomized controlled trial to examine the feasibility and impact of transradial approach versus transfemoral approach on outcomes of CTU PCI. And fourth CTU was a multi center trial, and population all consecutive patients referred to that center, and exclusion criteria were as follows any acute coronary syndrome within three months, severe heart failure, this and that the exclusion. And the result. <clears throat> the result is procedural, uh, procedural success, excess set complication and crossover rate. Crossover rate is almost same, both are 2 percent, 2 percent and excess set complication transfemoral is 6 percent, on the other hand transradial is 2 percent and procedural success same. Whatever may be the route, success is same, Whatever, whether you go to the radial approach or femoral approach goal is the same, we have to do the intervention that must have to be done. So, success rate is in both case uh, equal, but significant increase complication in transfemoral approach. And transradial balloon aortic valvuloplasty, here one case report just, a case of 85 year old man with previous CABG, severe aortic stenosis, worsening minimal effort angina, uh, uh, dyspnea and recurrent syncope. And they have done this by transradial approach using eight French shield. This is the picture. And retrograde recanalization of occluded radial artery. This is another study, single center experience. This is also published January 2022. All the data which I, I am giving is uh, 2022 or 2021. The purpose of the study was to explore the safety and feasibility of retrograde recanalization of the occluded radial artery via distal radial approach and result a total of 14 of 15 patients with 15 pieces of occluded radial arteries were successfully recanalized via distal radial approach and in the 15 occluded vessels 11 vessels uh, meaning that 73 percent had total occlusion and 4 vessels 26.7 percent had functional occlusion. Assessment of the conventional radial artery with optical coherence tomography after snap box approach. Snap box approach, after doing snap box approach, meaning that distal radial approach, they have seen <coughs> by uh, optical coherence tomography, meaning that OCT, and showed that whether there is significant arterial damage or not. This prospective OCT uh, based study showed that the diameter of the conventional radial artery 2.89 millimeter and acute basal injury of the conventional radial artery was rare in patients who underwent coronary intervention via the snap box approach. International hand function study following distal radial access, access <coughs> and this is another study and this is also published in May 2022 and uh, this study aimed to evaluate hand function following distal radial approach coronary angiography or percutaneous coronary intervention to assess long term safety of the technique. And they have shown that there is no significant difference of hand function in distal radial approach via the proximal radial approach. The fact that distal radial approach does not impair hand function on a multi-domain assessment even where the operator eligibility was just 50 cases and over is encouraging in terms of safety. This study shows that uh, you should be encouraged to do distal radial approach. 
So, more than 95% of the PCI, even complex cases, can be performed transradially. This is one conclusion. And transradial approach has transformed PCI procedures into same day procedures with almost no bleeding risk. And it is rare that such a simple innovation has such a big impact. And the radial approach has really entered the common imagination. You can tell it from the disappointment in patients' faces when you tell them that you have to switch. Whenever you tell a patient from, uh, to be switched from radial to femoral, and then and there they become very unhappy. And most of the patients like this procedure, particularly in our uh, country, female patients, they usually like very much. But for younger um, <coughs> faculties, those who are uh, starter or those who want to start the radial procedure, they should uh, avoid or they should be afraid of short stressor, elderly patient and female patient. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Professor Dr. Amir Jamaluddin, sir, uh, for your uh, nice presentation. Uh, we are uh, running short of time. A lot of uh, senior faculties are in front of us. Uh, <clears throat> I am uh, um, now requesting our uh, panelist uh, from the panel of experts, Dr. Shodesh Kumar Chakraborty uh, from Kulna. Please give a brief comment uh, about the session. Thank you, uh, Dr. Shakib. Thank you, BSCI, for giving me the opportunity to be stay here. Uh, nothing to say. Uh, we have uh, uh, heard from four renowned speakers, Professor Amir Jamaluddin sir, the pioneer radial interventionist in Bangladesh who made uh, the route popular, and uh, Professor Sabina Hashem nicely explained balloon assisted technique to prevent the side branch, uh, and Dr. Uh, uh, Abdul Momen and Nur Alum uh, elaborately shown as the common complications and how to overcome. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, now I am uh, requesting uh, Dr. Khandokar Asaduzzaman, Senior Consultant, uh, uh, Aliasgar Hospital. Please uh, give your uh, valuable comments regarding our three presenters of this session. Thank you. Actually, it is a very great honor and privilege for me to be a panel of expert of today's radial session. Actually, we are delighted with the presence of four eminent radial interventional cardiologists and brilliant speaker of this country. Actually, we have learned a lot from their species. Just I want to comment a few points regarding two issues. One is the knot already discussed. Uh, when you uh, made a knot uh, during the procedure, that is the catheter knot, actually you did a complications. And if you try to denoting it by aggressive maneuver, you may invite another complications. What is that? That is a spasm, severe spasm. So what should you do? Actually, you should manipulate it very gently. And before that, you should sedate the patients with mild sedation, and it will help a lot to unearth the catheter. And sometimes we do aggressively by using the, the uh, that is the tough end of the wire, that is opposite of the wire, and put it just proximal to the knot, and just it will help you to torque the catheter and to untwist the knot. Actually, uh, before going to the surgical procedure, we can try by another way. What we did, we can uh, took the help of the radiologist, radiographer. They can use the ultrasound wave frequently in different settings, and it will help to elevate the symptoms, and we can avoid the unnecessary surgical intervene. Thank you all. Thank you for patience hearing. Thank you. Now I am uh, requesting uh, our senior faculty uh, sitting in front of us, Professor uh, Khaled Mohsin, sir. Please give a, uh, a comments regarding four presenters, if you have any comments. Uh, thank you, Sakib. Actually, we are running short of time. We, uh, I just heard the last two lectures, actually. Uh, so Dr. Momen and uh, Professor Mir Jamaluddin, they are 
Professor Jamal is a pioneer in radial intervention and Moemin is also a very uh, good exponent. So they have uh, uh, created complications as well as tackled the complication. That is the thing. You cannot ensure that you won't create any complication because it is, uh, apart from the bleeding, an aneurysm radial has got some extra complication, but you need to detect it timely and address it timely. That is the key to the success. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I am requesting uh, our uh, senior uh, faculty and teacher, uh, Professor Abdullah Shafi Mozumda, sir, uh, please uh, give uh, uh, a short comment uh, regarding radial intervention. Actually, I, I came late to this session, so I have very little to comment on the lectures. I only heard the lecture of Professor Mir Jamaluddin, who, who, which is who was just the pioneer of the radio, radio intervention in this country. So, and I think the other speakers, uh, they are brilliant. So, definitely they spoke with a very nice way. That's the, all the way. Thank you very much. Now, uh, we are at the end of our session. Uh, I am requesting uh, our uh, uh, senior faculty and chairperson, uh, Professor STM Abu Azam, sir, ex-director of NICBD, please uh, conclude the session and give your uh, final remarks. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, uh, actually, I'm, I'm not scheduled for this session. I'm scheduled for the next session. So thank you to call me for here. And every, uh, I, I, I got the chance to hear three lectures, not Sabin Hashem. The, the, the Professor Jamal, Professor Mid Jamal, Professor Nalom, uh, Dr. Mumen, they narrated very nicely and very elaborately. Uh, the, the radial approach is now in worldwide very popular approach and very, um, it has got very good implement. And our doctor now they developed themselves to do and undo the problem and they not, they not only discuss the problem, they, they also discuss the solution of the problem. This is the nice. So thank you very much. Thanks. Now it is time for moment to hand over. Uh, I am requesting uh, the most uh, senior faculty, uh, Professor Abdullah Safi Mozumdar, please come on the dais and give the moment to, uh, to uh, uh, Dr. Abdul Momen, Assistant Professor of NICBD. I am requesting uh, all the panelists, please sit beside. The. And uh, next, uh, the moment to hand over to uh, Professor uh, Sabina Hashem. Uh, he will hand over uh, by the Professor STM Azum, sir. Thank you, sir. And this is the end of our session. I am requesting all the uh, uh, learned audience, please uh, stay for the next session.